So what is PTSD? Good question. Hey, I'm Dr. McCleary, licensed clinical psychologist and Navy veteran, and I make mental health videos for veterans and their families. Let me start by telling you what post-traumatic stress or PTSD is not. One, it is not a disorder that only veterans can get. Two, it is not a disorder that you can only get from combat. And three, it is not a disorder that cannot be treated. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's go over the symptoms. PTSD is kind of a complex disorder. Why is it complex, do you ask? Well, it's complex because the diagnosis consists of 20 different symptoms. 20 symptoms is a lot. But that's not exactly why it's complex. The reason that it's complex is you don't have to have all 20 symptoms to have PTSD. You can have some symptoms in one category and only one or two in another and still have PTSD. And what that means is one person's PTSD may look totally different than another person's PTSD. PTSD is a mental health disorder that is the result of a trauma. And a trauma has a very specific definition when it comes to PTSD. A trauma refers to actual exposure to death, serious injury, or sexual violence. There are four ways to experience a PTSD trauma. One, it can happen directly to you. Two, you can witness it happening to someone else. Three, you can hear about a trauma happening to a close loved one, family, um, friend. The last way that a trauma can be experienced is being exposed on a consistent basis to adverse details of other traumas. These are typically found uh, with cops, firemen, paramedics, first responders, those type of folks that have to consistently be exposed to adverse details of the trauma of, of other people. If this video is too in-depth for you, I'll link down a video that I did where I broke down PTSD in two minutes down in the description. There are four subcategories of symptoms when it comes to PTSD. One, re-experiencing the trauma. Two, avoidance. Three, changes in your thoughts and mood. And four, changes in your arousal and your reactivity. So let's break them down further. Within the subcategory of re-experiencing your trauma symptoms, there are five separate symptoms. The first symptom is recurrent, involuntary, intrusive, distressful memories. What does all that mean, Doc? Basically what it means is thinking about it or images coming to your mind when you don't want them to. The second re-experiencing symptom is something that we call distressful dreams. Some people call them nightmares that are related to the trauma that occurred. Simple enough, right? The next one isn't as simple. These are dissociative reactions. You might have heard these called flashbacks. And flashbacks aren't exactly what you see on the movies. 
these kind of just videos of replaying the trauma. Sometimes it is like that. Sometimes it is that vivid. But that's not all that flashbacks are. Flashbacks can be certain smells, certain visuals, certain sounds that aren't actually occurring right now that are related to your trauma. I did a whole video on flashbacks. So if you're interested in learning more about flashbacks, I'll link that down in the description. The next re-experiencing symptom is intense or prolonged psychological distress. Whenever you're triggered either internally or by something externally. So what does that really mean? When you're triggered, does it suck? The last re-experiencing symptom is marked physiological distress when you are triggered or cued by things that remind you of the trauma. What does that mean? We're talking about sweating, shaking, heart pounding, those type of things. In order to meet criteria for PTSD, you must have at least one of those five re-experiencing symptoms. If you're getting value out of this video, go ahead and give it a like, or better than that, share it with another veteran. The next subcategory of symptoms is avoidance. And you can avoid two different ways. One, there's avoiding the kind of internal things, the memories, the thoughts, the feelings that are connected to the trauma. The other thing are the external reminders, avoiding certain people, certain places, certain people that look a certain way certain people that dress a certain way. Anything that's external that reminds you of the trauma, you avoid. Those are two ways. In order to meet criteria for PTSD, you at least need to be avoiding the traumas, either internally or externally, but you're probably doing both. The next category of PTSD symptoms is negative changes in your thoughts or your mood. And there is a whopping seven potential symptoms in this category. The first symptom in this category is the inability to remember important parts about your trauma. And if you were intoxicated at the time, or you had a head injury that may be at least partially responsible with you, for you not being able to remember, then that doesn't count. The second symptom is persistent or exaggerated negative beliefs or expectations about yourself, other people, or the world such as I am bad or no one can be trusted or the world is completely dangerous. The next symptom is persistent and often distorted thoughts regarding the cause of the trauma that lead to either self blame or blaming others. The important word here is distorted. For example, if someone shot you in the face and you blame the person that shot you in the face, that doesn't seem too distorted to me. And thus, that's probably not a symptom. Now, if you blame yourself 100% for getting shot in the face and don't blame the person that shot you at all, well, maybe we need to take a closer look at it. 
The next symptom is a persistent negative emotional state, such as fear, horror, anger, guilt, or shame. Next category can get a little complicated and it's diminished interest or participation in activities that you used to enjoy. Now, what we call this is anhedonia. And it's different fr from just not doing things that you don't like to do. This is actually doing the same things that you like to do prior to the trauma and still not getting the same pleasure out of them. Example, say you like to go fishing and your trauma didn't have anything to do with fishing. But when you go fishing now, you just seem like you can't um, get the same pleasure out of it as you used to. That's more what we're talking about here. If you want to learn more about anhedonia, I did a whole video on it and I'll link it down here in the description. The next symptom is feeling detached from others. And the symptom after that is kind of related. It's the inability or difficulty with experiencing pleasurable emotions or positive emotions, such as love or happiness. You need to have two or more of these symptoms to meet criteria for PTSD. The last subcategory, I promise you, is changes in your arousal and reactivity related to your trauma. The first symptom in this category is irritable or angry outbursts. And the second symptom in this category is reckless or self-destructive behavior, such as driving your car without a seatbelt, speeding down the highway 105 miles an hour. Reckless. The next symptom is hypervigilance. And this one can be tricky. And it can be tricky for veterans because of a lot of our training. So we have to determine what is this symptom? What is being hyper aroused? What is having your head on a swivel? When does that become a symptom? And when is it just part of your training? A good question to ask yourself is, how do my buddies act in the same situations? How do people in a similar profession that I had act in a similar situation. If you feel like you do it a bit more than those individuals, well, it might be a clue that something else is going on. All your buddies could also have PTSD. The next symptom is an exaggerated startle response. The last two symptoms in this category are difficulty concentrating and difficulty falling or staying asleep. You need at least two symptoms in this category to meet criteria for PTSD. Okay, I know that's a lot of symptoms, but let me tell you something about those symptoms that you may not know. After experiencing the trauma, all of those symptoms are completely normal to experience. They're so normal to experience that the criteria for PTSD says that you can't be diagnosed if your trauma happened less than 30 days ago. That's because all of these symptoms to a certain degree are normal. And it's how your mind and your body is processing the trauma. Now, with these symptoms persist, 
that's when we may need to take a closer look. As with all mental health disorders, in order for it to be a disorder, is it has to impair your functioning or cause you distress somehow. It also can't be the result of a medical condition or the result of substance use. But wait, there's more. You can also have a specifier added on to your diagnosis of PTSD of derealization or depersonalization. Neither of these specifiers are needed to meet criteria for PTSD diagnosis. Well, let's break them down real quick. Depersonalization refers to kind of feeling like you're outside of yourself, like you are viewing the situation as if you're watching a movie or maybe feeling like time is moving more slowly. Derealization refers more to feeling like something about yourself or the environment around you is not real or distant or distorted in some way. You can also have a specifier of delayed expression tacked on to your diagnosis of PTSD. And really what delayed expression is referring to is you didn't meet criteria for PTSD or maybe you weren't experiencing enough symptoms to meet criteria for PTSD until six months or longer after the trauma happened. Sometimes we see this for people that are really good at avoiding or have worked for a long time and just put it on the back burner. And then they started to experience some of these symptoms once they slow down. So that's it. PTSD broken down into all of the symptoms, all of the categories. And I hope this was a helpful video for you. If it was, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about PTSD and mental health. But more important than that, if this video is helpful for you, that means it can probably be helpful for another veteran or another veteran's family member. So I ask that you share it with them because at the end of the day, that's really what all of this is about. One veteran trying to help another.